Welcome back to the show, guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining in for another episode. <coughs> oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I've been fighting a little bit of a cough and uh, trying not to get sick. I don't think I'm sick yet, but about choked on my own saliva there, I think. Anyways, welcome back, guys. Sorry about that. I apologize. For those of you guys watching on the MVM Show YouTube channel, you're probably wondering what in the world's going on in the background here. We're in a hotel. We did some traveling. This is going to be a hunt review episode, and I'm here with Nathaniel Yarbrough. He came up with, here with me. What's up, man? Nothing much. <laughs> Duck hunting. Duck hunting. That's exactly right. And uh, we're way up north where the north winds blow, and uh, in California it's still... They open up a little bit earlier up here. First time I ever did it. First time we ever hunted this place. So we're just going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, we have, we're having a good time. Yeah. Blast. What do you think? What do you think about it? Worth the drive? Yes. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's real fun. So we get, we made a long, long trek. We left right after I got off work, headed up here and... Um, never been here before, really never, never definitely talked to anybody, other hunters about it. Um, did my research just like I would do if I'd never been somewhere. And a lot of you guys are listening, people are like, man, how do you, you know, how do you do that? How do you go somewhere you've never been? Well, you got to research and believe it or not, YouTube is a good tool. Um, cause people will put where they hunt. You can use that. You can use Google's, what I do a lot, and stuff like that. It, it, it'll help you learn and help you know where to go. You can look at duck hunting chats. You can look up the actual specific refuges on uh, the Fish and Games wa website. And that's basically what I did. And kind of took a shot in the dark. And Nathaniel had some school pretty much caught up every, the way you know everybody's pretty much homeschooling right now. And so I said, hey, you want to go with? And he's like, yeah, so that's we're here. Yep. And uh, we had a great day today, or yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. What did you end up shooting? I shot a pintail, a mallard, a shoveler, and a green wing, all drakes. Yeah. Oh, oh, I think the hen, I think the, the hen shoveler. was a, uh, I think the shoveler was a hen. The I pintail think. was a hen, I think. Oh, yeah, pintail, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, pintail. But, uh. You shot pretty good. I mean, that's the first hunt of the season for you, and you yeah. shot pretty good. So, felt comfortable with that. You were what were we were using that heavy hammer, mm -hmm. the heavy shots, heavy hammer. So it's fifteen percent bismuth, and the rest of it's still uh, three inch four shot. What do you what do you think of it? I liked it a whole lot. Um, yeah, I don't think it, it didn't jam one time. Uh, usually, like the Kents jam real bad with my gun. Do they? But, yeah. What do you ha what were you using again? The, what, your gun. Oh, it was a Franke Affinity. Yeah, yeah. Twelve gauge. That's your dad's, right? You just bought one. Yes, the same one. You have to forgive us if we're a little uh, slow on the talking, and, and yeah, <laughs> we uh, haven't got a lot of sleep. That's I don't know how, but that's just part of duck hunting. Like it doesn't matter. You can take nap for twenty four hours before you go duck hunting, but by the end of the day, you're gonna be completely zapped. So we're a little out of it, a little tired. I think we'll be taking a little siesta after this, but. Anyways, you know, we made the drive, made a long drive, got off work, came up here. Uh, the biggest thing to me is that you could scout. Yes, yeah. You know, it's we can't really do that, you know, in the Central Valley. And really even Sac Valley. Um, haven't been hunting down in Southern California. But you could scout. You could take your binoculars. You can go around on the days you can't hunt. And you could look for birds and pick spots and make marks and it's just, it's really cool. We've seen a lot of game, mm -hmm. seen a lot of big deer, big bucks, nice a lot bucks. of pheasants. Yes. It's just really cool up here. Mm -hmm. I like it a whole lot. To say the least. Yes. But uh, what was your what was your thoughts and ideas of yesterday's hunt? Well. Or hunt. I kind of got kind of like crazy, like, let's get out there. Yeah, at first, but. Then when we got out, well, I guess tongue twisting, I guess. That's well, right. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. 
He's. I, I think Nathaniel's a little tired. <laughs> you need to go to sleep, huh? Probably. Fifteen years old. That brain don't function well with <laughs> as good as with with some sleep. But no, I mean, what was your thoughts on, on the hunt yesterday? Well, it was real fun. Um, Pintails didn't really want to work because, like you said, because the over, overcast. Mm. Then right w- when you shot your bird, uh, and then right after the sun started to set and kind of peeked through the clouds. Then them pintails are just coming right over us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that and but that right that was what thirty forty five minutes for shoot yeah. time ended, and that it was kind of it's kind of fun going with these younger guys and saying stuff that I say nonchalantly, and they're like, "You were like what? You were like didn't understand because I said, man, this overcast is killing us,' and you were like, what? I said, well, the birds see you a lot easier, and he's like, how? I'm like, well, because there's no shadows. And so they can see down on you a whole lot easier, and they they just don't work as good. And as soon as that sun popped out, what that creates is shadows. Mm-hmm. And then you're in the dark. They don't see as good, plus the sun's in their eyes. Yeah. So it was kind of cool that I had said something about it. You probably uh-huh. didn't fully understand what I was saying, and then you've seen it for yourself. Yeah. You know? It was pretty cool. I enjoy I That's the stuff I enjoy about duck hunting is someone that's hasn't been doing as long, a young guy. To be able to teach them stuff, stuff that I don't, I take for granted, don't think nothing about you. You're like seeing, you know, it's like not mind blowing experiences, but you're like, oh man, it's like, it's just, you could see it in your eyes that it's clicking. Things are making sense. You're putting it in the log, writing it down in the mental checklist. Like, okay, that's what this does. That's what this does. This is what this means. It's really cool. And that's the fun of taking young guys out, newer hunters, stuff like that. In fact, we got a guy coming up to day his name's caleb he is a brand new he's never duck hunted he's gonna hunt with us but he's mainly gonna film and i was telling you about that he's got that hundred thousand dollar camera he's gonna film with pretty cool supposed to be making a a really nice film on rocky specifically so really excited about that he's a professional videographer and editor and photographer so he hit me up last year seen some of our videos and was like man i really want to do a piece on this and he knows a lot of guys that have done work for yeti on some of those those duck hunting videos for Yeti. He's friends with them. So it's really cool. But um that's the first time I think I shot the heavy hammer out of my 12 gauge, I think. Oh really? I think so. I've been shooting okay. it with my 20 gauge. Okay. I I it works. Yeah. I, I like mean, it. it did a good job. You know, I'm not going to sit here just because, you know, we work with heavy shot and say, "Oh, it's it's better than uh, any other product." Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. It's just it definitely did the trick. And, I, and I'm just a big four-shot guy. You're getting more pellets yes. and shot on target. Yes. I'm not crazy about three-shot. Yeah. I like four-shot I mean, we lot. we use... Did you ever use two-shot? I did, I think, it? a couple times. Okay. It destroyed the birds. Yeah, it does. Especially with my old pump. Really? Yeah. Now, that was a full choke, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like a... Like a... It was in it. Like, you couldn't yes. change the choke no. out, right? Yes, it was permanent. Was that a 12-gauge or a 20? It was a 12. It was... A 12 gauge, I think it was a Remington. Maybe okay. I'm was not it? 100% though. Yeah, I wonder if that's. Yeah. And it was a full choke 30 inch barrel. Yes. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, because when you would hit birds, it just pummels them. Oh yeah. Like, it's They're crazy. Done. And that's the thing is, I was watching you, I was watching John with his. Full, I thought he had a full choke. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I thought he said there was a full choke in his, but maybe I'm wrong. There was someone else though. And I was watching when you guys, it was either clean misses or clean kills. And I know people throw a lot of stink up about full chokes and duck hunting. And there's a lot of people that like full chokes and duck hunting. Mm-hmm. But it's either a clean kill or a clean miss. I had that one mile shot yesterday. I missed him cleanly. Yeah. And then when the next one I hit him, it pummeled him. But now he wasn't, I didn't hit him in the head. I think I hit him more in the body and it busted both his wings. And, um, but it was, it was a really good hunt. It was fun. We got the birds are decoying. Yeah, I mean, how fun. often do we get to see that, you know, when there's Not so, so much pressure down south where we yeah. hunt? Both our mallards decoyed. Our, the one you shot came right in. I oh, mean, yeah. we I mean you were doing the Drake whistle, and I was doing the the little small, real quiet quack. That was and we really worked cool. them in. That was cool. That was good yeah, teamwork that was really cool. working that bird in. And you've learned enough already. You understand how to call and when not to overcall. You're very, I like it, want with you, you know, and that's the thing is, you know, being someone less experienced, don't just go blow your guts out, you know, and just kind of like, listen, you, you listen really good. And like, am I calling too much? Am I not calling enough? More than likely I was, t- 
more often than not, I was telling you, hey, call some more. You know, call those pin tails. Because yeah. I didn't have my pin tail call me. I'm not <laughs> comfortable at all with the quack yet. Yeah. All. you. I mean, honestly, when you blew it yesterday when I was telling you to blow the call, you sounded good to me. I can do it okay loud, but I can't do it soft. Oh, the soft call, yeah. I can't do that. I don't well, know Well, you could why. hear me. I asked you, was I, I go, I'm struggling. Could you tell? And you're like, yeah, it sounded weird a couple yeah. times. Because that's a different call I've never used. It's dead end game calls. That's the name of the company, and it sounds good, but I have to like manipulate it to get what I'm trying to get out of it. But once I figure that spot, sweet spot out, it, it sounded really good. I went the low quacks, yeah. but I had a couple of like, <laughs> and like little cracks. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oof, that's bad. It's gonna flare a bird. But um, yeah, and then I was using my JG Litters, the T1, uh, the timber, and it just, I still don't have the right read in that thing. It's just too raspy. I need to put like a, like a 315 or something in there, I think. But what what were you using for your calls? Well, I had the JJ, uh, not the JJ Lairs. You just said JJ Lairs, so I thought that's what it was. But the Jace Robertson Pro Series Duck Commander. Oh, okay. Pretty sure that's what it's called. A Double Nasty. Mm-hmm. And the Till and Pentel. Yeah, the 3-in-1. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the Duck I Commander think, too, right? Uh, or is that a I Buck Gardener? Buck Gardener. Okay. Yes. And yeah, that's what I got on my lanyard. Yeah, and a finisher. Yeah, and you, yeah, you, that that double nasty is probably a really good call for you to practice on getting that real quiet uh-huh. quack. It's an easy <clears throat> double read call to get that really silent, just mellow quack when they're already coming in. If you need to even call it all, but that Drake yeah. whistle, honestly, I've I've been using that more and more, and it's just, it's just it works. Yeah, that's my in favorite. fact that was one bird's turn with that. And came in. What was uh, that? A shoveler. That shoveler but came in. Came right over us. I think it might have saw us and just kept going. Yeah, I'm sure Did that's it. what happened. You, is that the one you shot? You shot what? that hand, right? Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking of another bird. Yeah. Yeah. So we shot. We ended up shooting four piece. I shot Drake Mallard, Drake Pinto. Uh, two Drake Green Wings, I think. Or did I shoot a hand? I think you did shoot a hand. Okay, so I keep thinking that was you, but I I was the one that shot one hand and one drake. Yes. You shot a drake green wing. Hand shoveler? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Hand pintail and a drake mallard. Yes. That was cool. Yeah. That That drake mallard didn't have no green on its head. None. If you would have known better. The only reason I knew he was a drake is because his wings, basically on his feet. And very orange feet. Very orange. Very (laughs) orange. When you crushed him... He flipped over and his feet were up and it's yeah. like, my goodness, I go, look at those red legs. You know, it's crazy. Super, like, look like a, mi- you know, migrators had that, yeah. but his whole head was just solid brown. Mm-hmm. Mine had a lot more green yeah, on it, but did. still was flecked up pretty yeah. bad. But, um, yeah, the pressure was very minimal. Um, trying to think. We didn't really have no weather. It was overcast most of the time. A cold front is moving in. I don't know if that's why it made it better. Um, it was kind of warm, like 72, 73. Really no wind. Like I said, right at the end, I would say there's probably seven, eight mile an hour wind out of the west, I believe, west, northwest. And there's a few shots going off around the refuge. Not mm-hmm. too much, Not huh? too much at all. The that, guy in front of us did it pretty good. Yeah, he looked was doing like. pretty good. And it looked like he was sitting on the bank. Yeah. I seen him the whole time. He was like in a broad sight, what I could see. I mean, you are hunkered down to the point where we almost can't even see and still having a hard time getting those pintails to come in close. I guess they just want that spot. Maybe we need to stand up. Probably. <laughs> don't, Probably. Don't be in the cover. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. The, the pintail I shot, I stood up the whole time. I know. Like, he ain't going to come yeah. in, and he just kept coming lower and coming straight across. I'm like, okay, you're done. You Boom. folded him. Like a wet rags. Yeah. He just, his both his wings come in and just... Splash. <clears throat> he was up there a little ways. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I was really confident in that shot, though. Those left to rights or right to lefts are are my most favorite shots. I'm us- I'm really confident in those shots, but not so close. Some of those teal were so close. Yeah. I, I With that full choke, I won't lie to you. It was tough. One till I missed. It was coming right at my face. I saw it, and I, sh- I was leaning on my seat kind of backwards because... Mm-hmm. If I would have sat straight up, I would be popping out of the right. chili. So it's slanted. I just pull up, shoot, and just fell back. Did you backflip in yeah. there? Did you get him? That's I funny. I didn't know you fell him. back in the water. We were we were talking about it just to let the listeners in on it. How um, <laughs> So Nathaniel, 
basically, if you don't eat, yes, I don't know what the gap is. It's probably just when you start feeling sick, but you don't eat enough, you pass out. Yeah, I feel like light. I mean, you guys can see he's skin and bones if you're watching on the YouTube channel. There is not a just bones, basically. Flesh covering bones. <laughs> Unlike me. I'm just a little um muscular. <laughs> I'm I'm being sarcastic. I'm chunky, but anyways, uh He'll, he'll pass out stone cold. So his mom was chewing me out like, you better make... Basically what happened was is Jake, his dad, lied and yeah. said, he's starving. And you never said that to him, no, did you? Or did you? That. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say... I don't think I said a we, word. We had something... You never even talked to him, I don't think. Separately on the phone. No, you were with me when yeah. I did. Right yeah, there. so we, we got a little snack like hour or two before we started hunting. So I knew, I was like, okay, I knew he was okay. Because I think his blood sugar, sugar gets low or something. And that's why that happens. But anyways, so I'm getting my text. I'm getting Marco Polo's. I'm getting phone calls. And it's not just it's not from your mom. It's just from a bunch of different people. Yeah. Like, how are you guys doing up there? Is the, how's the hunt going? You know, and I knew that's what it was. So I was like, it's too I'm too busy shooting birds. I'm not answering the phone, so stop calling me is basically what happened. Uh-huh. And, but I thought, well, oh, it had a little lull there for a second. I was like, I better check my phone. I looked and I seen Sarah, your mom. And I was like, I better read this one. And, and it said, I hope you know how to resuscitate oh or something <laughs> because Nathaniel will pass out. And she had a mad face, a red emoji mad face at me. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I'm like, I better reply to this one. I didn't reply to nothing else. I replied to this one because I'm like, he's fine. We ate. I don't know. Jake lied and said, oh, we we didn't feed him all this junk. Just trying to get me in trouble, basically. So as I'm texting back, I look up. I don't know if you pointed him out. I look up and there's, I I thought for you. Because you shot before I even saw. No, no, I said something. Yeah, you said something. I I look up. I look up and I thought at first they were gabble because they were actually all hen hen tells. Yes. Which is really weird to see all together, but there was like seven or eight of them. Yeah, I had the phone in my hand. I look up; they're like twenty-five yards away, low. I go to put my phone in my waiter pocket. I can't get in there because I'm obviously freaking out, trying to stuff it in as fast. And I'm like, I'm gonna drop it in the water if I don't. So I take the phone. I put it between both knees. I'm pinching my knees together so my legs. <laughs> I have no balance. I lean back. I shoot. When I shoot, because my legs are together, it throws me back. I fall back. My phone falls out of my knees into the water. I fall completely backwards over into the water. Oh, man. I was so mad. I was like, just because I'm trying to text you, Sarah, knowing that I'm taking care of your son. So, of course, there's always a fun experience. But, oh, my goodness. I was a little upset about that one. Because that was finally the birds that were low. Enough, those pintails came low enough finally to get something. But, like I said, I'm pretty sure they were all hens. It was weird. Yeah, it was really weird, actually. I mean, how many group? I mean, we seen flocks of oh, a lot, fifteen pintails in one group, maybe twenty. We saw uh, groups of green wing till twenty, thirty, forty. Yeah, big flocks, big huge groups. Flocks. Really, not very many shovelers. I don't think. No, not just too a many. few. Yeah, the one you shot, and maybe yeah. a couple others. Um, didn't really see any widgeon. Oh, your, your dad's trying to call you. We'll put him on hold here a second. We'll we'll wrap this up here in a minute. But uh, I'm trying to think what else other birds we've seen. Really, it was just unbelievable amount of pintails and mallards. Saw quite a few mallards. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was definitely worth the trip. We're going to hunt again tomorrow. And Travis and Jake and Morgan and Talon are coming up here. Talon got back from one guiding trip now he's going back he's leaving sunday to go back to i believe wyoming to do elk hunting so he's been gone old town man he used to be with me every hunt just like you are now but yes you grow up and move on things happen in life get jobs and school and everything else like that but uh anyways i'm trying to think of anything else we can add to this hunt the story um went and ate pretty cool Little place in town, little hamburger joint. Pretty good. Burger and fries and pretty good shake and chugging the sodas. Oh my goodness. We couldn't get chugging that soda down. We didn't have sodas. we I will say we didn't have I had one bottle of water. We saved it because we were already thirsty when we went out there. 
And I said, okay. And believe it or not, I can't believe Titus Headings is the one that brought the water because usually I'm not the guy that does that. But we had half a small bottle of water and we just waterfalled it. We took turns, slurp, slurp, slurp. We got down to the very end. There was only a little bit of, it didn't look like that much. I said, go ahead and finish off. And he just kept choke. <laughs> he kept drinking it until he about choked. And he like spit some out. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm, we're dying of thirst here. Because all the water we had, walked out, hiked back out, got in, went to eight, and then the guy took forever to give us our drinks, and I was just chugging, so I think I was so bloated from drinking like two larges. Uh, yeah, then I was sick too. later, was but sick. last thing I needed to drink was the soda. But anyways, so glad you came, man. It was a good hunt. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I hope you guys enjoy these hunt reviews. If you guys like these hunt reviews, say something down in the comments on iTunes and give us a rating and review. <laughs> Let us know what you think of these. We're really going to push these out all season long. I really want to do these. We're still going to have guests. We're still going to have a little bit more organized podcasts. But for these, it's just kind of giving you guys, if you watch the channel, a little bit more details and backstory to what really goes on behind the scenes and our just thoughts of where we're hunting, where we're at. You know, when we go to Washington, when we go, when I go to Kansas for the Flyways Collective, all this stuff, it's just, it's really fun. And it's kind of like a dialogue and a, a history of the hunts for us to even just keep track for ourselves and just the journeys that we have. So appreciate everybody for listening. And uh, it was fun having Nathaniel. We got many more trips planned, I'm sure, as long as he can yeah. keep himself out of trouble from not taking too much school off. But anyways... We will see you guys on the next one.